Bill Bryson, Notes from a Small Island In the Notes from a Small Island, author Bill Bryson takes his readers on a fascinating journey through Britain as he revisits his favorite haunts, before moving back to the United States. The book captures the essence of the island's rich cultural and historical heritage, including its lush landscapes, many ancient sites, and extraordinary places. Readers can expect to experience the United Kingdom through the eyes of an American expat who becomes enamored with the tiny country, its tale of overpopulation, and the remarkable stories behind some of the structures and locations dotting the island. Bryson's British Road Trip American writer Bill Bryson, after spending 20 years in Britain, decided to give his children a taste of life in a new country, the United States. But before leaving, he went on a farewell tour, revisiting his favorite spots to rediscover his love for the country that had stolen his heart. Bryson explored his personal favorite towns and eventually ended up analyzing the size, population density, and historical significance of Britain. He stumbled upon a graveyard in a small village near Oxford, where famous luminaries like George Orwell and H. H. Asquith were buried in a simple cemetery. Oxford is also filled with memories of its famous luminaries, including the laboratory where Edmund Halley discovered his comet and Christopher Wren's home. He uncovered surprising facts, such as the River Thames being the 108th largest river if it were in the U.S. and the possibility of cramming the population of seven U.S. states into an area the size of Iowa. The summary concludes on the note that Bryson's road trip to rediscover Britain formed a captivating story filled with interesting and informative revelations. Britain's Rich Historical Heritage The United Kingdom boasts an astounding number of historically and architecturally significant buildings and sites, with 445,000 listed and 600,000 archaeological sites, to name a few. However, lax planning regulations and building codes have led to the demolition of important buildings with little consequence. Despite this, there are still plenty of well-preserved places worth visiting, such as Durham Cathedral and Stonehenge. These sites are managed modestly, with no entrance fee, enhancing the visitor's experience and highlighting the importance of preserving Britain's rich historical heritage. Discovering the Wonders of London Author Bill Bryson shares his admiration and awe for London, a magnificent and vast metropolis that still surprises him despite living and working there for eight years. From the city's countless street names to its theatrical offerings, museums, and old town squares, Bryson highlights the fascinating details that make London an incredible place. He also praises the city's cab drivers, who boast a mental atlas of every street, and the remarkable London underground map that simplifies navigating around the city. Overall, Bryson's book is a delightful tribute to the many wonders of London. The best ways to explore the United Kingdom Navigating the United Kingdom by car can be stressful. Neglect by the government has impacted public transport, although the train services remain reliable. Walking is a great way to see the country, given the vast network of footpaths. The author, Bryson, fell in love with the beauty of the UK during his hiking tours of the Lake District. Britain's Landscape and Conservation Britain's stunning landscapes are preserved by individuals who see it as their responsibility, but the government's lack of funding and policies poses a serious problem to conservation efforts. Despite its small size, Britain boasts an extraordinarily beautiful natural landscape that is woven into its culture and everyday life. Preservation is part of the British mindset, repairing a fallen wall is done without question, as the wall is considered part of the landscape. Unfortunately, the government does not share this attitude, and conservation efforts are hindered by a lack of funding and concern. In fact, London's Royal Opera House receives more government funding than the country's top 10 national parks combined. This lack of funding poses a serious problem, as preservation falls into the hands of underfunded park authorities and individual farmers, like the one who repaired the fallen wall. Real conservation needs institutional backing. For example, hedgerows are a venerated feature of the landscape and provide habitats for many species. However, 
around a fifth of all hedgerows in Britain date back to the Anglo-Saxon period, and there isn't a single law that protects them from being uprooted, leading to the loss of 96,000 miles of hedgerow between 1945 and 1985. Government policies didn't help, as grants were simultaneously available to promote the conservation and elimination of hedges for 24 years. Despite the government stopping payments to farmers to destroy hedges, losses have continued, with another 53,000 miles of hedgerows lost between 1984 and 2000. The inconsistent and contradictory government policies have resulted in a serious toll on Britain's stunning landscapes, with electricity pylons, badly designed buildings, and other ugly modern aspects defacing them. Conservation efforts are crucial to preserve Britain's natural beauty, and institutional backing is necessary for successful preservation. Discovering Britain's Hidden Gems Britain is home to hidden natural and historical wonders easily accessible with the help of Ordnance Survey maps. The author highlights his personal encounters in Winchcombe, where he discovered the remains of a Roman villa covered with wild ivy and a well-preserved mosaic. The Yorkshire Dales region captivated the author with its breathtaking beauty defined by dramatic fells and lush valleys dotted with farms and small villages. The Dales' charm is not only its aesthetic attractions but also its kind and hospitable people who rush to help in times of need. The author's experiences serve as reminders that our museums house not just artifacts but also utilitarian everyday objects, while Britain's hidden gems await discovery in plain sight. The Unspoken Rules of British Manners The reputation of the British for their manners is well deserved as consideration for others is embedded in their national character. Apologies are commonplace, regardless of fault. Queuing is a cultural norm, and the British delight in simple pleasures. Douglas Bath's attempted robbery failed due to his disregard for etiquette. A mining village's cultural triumph. Ashington, a mining village in the north of England, was once home to 16 mining pits that employed over 1.2 million people. However, by the time Bill Bryson visited the Woodhorn Colliery Museum in the 1980s, only 16 pits remained, and the industry had changed significantly. Children as young as 10 used to work in the mines, but safety precautions were often ignored, leading to tragic accidents. Despite the hardships faced by the mining families in Ashington, the village had a thriving cultural life, including societies devoted to philosophy, opera, and cycling. Most notably, the Ashington Group, a painting society made up of miners with no formal artistic training, gained national acclaim for their work in the 1930s and 1940s. The group's legacy continues to be displayed at the Colliery Museum, serving as a proud testament to the village's miners' resilience. As Bill Bryson's farewell tour unravels, readers will have had a taste of Britain's breathtaking landscapes, dense population, and unique societal norms. From the enchanting cast of characters to the everyday people he encounters, Bryson paints a vivid and immersive portrait of what makes the United Kingdom so charming and distinct. Along the way, the author also delves into the underfunded preservation efforts for historical sites, highlighting the urgency of institutional backing to conserve the island's heritage. Through it all, Notes from a Small Island is a heartwarming and captivating exploration of a land brimming with history, culture, and remarkable people, solidifying why Britain captured the heart of this American writer, 